What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be taking another crack at brewing a non-alcoholic beer. A stout this time. The last time I made one was actually this wit beer here and I'd say it was like a 75% success. Um, there was definitely some stuff about it that I was not a huge fan of, but I did manage to avoid having a watery body and a kind of worty, unfermented beer flavor in, in this beer. The only issues I think were really that the intensity of the flavor was very low. The other issue was that that wit beer yeast didn't really produce that many esters and phenols just because of that super low original gravity. Now I used a hot mash method to create this beer, where I mashed at about 175 degrees for a very short period of time. In today's video, we're going to be using the other popular method to create non-alcoholic beer with a cold, non-enzymatic mash. And what that means is that we're actually really more doing like a cold steep than an actual mashing process. So I'll be taking the entire grist and I'll be steeping it in cold water, um, actually very cold water, about refrigeration temperature water, for 8 to 12 to even 24 hours you can do as well. This will extract all of the flavor, all of the color from the specialty malts, and then uh, give us a very small amount of fermentable sugars to work with, which should help keep us in the realm of a non-alcoholic beer around half a percent ABV when the whole thing is finished. Once we complete the mash, there's going to be a pretty thick layer of starchy sediment that settles down to the bottom of the mash tun. It's really important that we separate that out, so we're going to have to run the word off of the vessel that I use as a mash tun and into my actual brew kettle. We don't want that layer of starchy sediment in there because A, it's going to scorch on your elements, and B, it's going to be very, very difficult to remove that residue from your brew kettle after it's done. So for those of you who are using single vessel brewing systems, especially electric brew in a bag systems, just be mindful of that and try to figure out a way to conduct your mash in a separate vessel. So I'll be using probably a fermenter for mine instead of your typical mash tun. As I mentioned in the last video, the choice of beer style is very important when uh, crafting a non-alcoholic beer recipe. When I made that whipped beer, I thought that those spices were going to kind of cover up the like characteristic non-alcoholic beer kind of flavors that you might get, and they didn't quite work out the way that I thought they would. Um, so with this beer, I'm trying to get a little bit more flavor in there with the malts, and hopefully as a choice of a stout, which has, you know, some pretty strong and aggressive flavors in there, I'm hoping that I can cover up some of the classic non-alcoholic beer character with those extra flavors. So we'll see how that works. One last thing to be aware of when you are brewing a non-alcoholic beer, I said this this in the last video and I will say it again this time there's a very real food safety concern here because this is a non-alcoholic beer it doesn't have a lot of the things going for it that a standard strength beer has for it namely alcohol but also non-alcoholic beer does not have the same amount of alpha acids of hops in it uh, which is really the main defense that beer has against microorganisms bottom line is non-alcoholic beer can give you food poisoning if you're not careful about it so when you're making it the best thing you can do to prevent food poisoning from happening is is by keeping the pH of the beer below 4.0, 3.9, generally that range. Um, the internet will tell you 4.6, but industry professionals have personally told me less than 3.9 is what you're targeting. So that's what I'll be doing today. The best way to get to that point is to add a lot of acidulated malt into the grist, and you will see that shortly. Before we jump into the recipe, I want to thank a couple organizations for helping to make the video possible. That would be firstly, Northern Brewer, where you can find all the ingredients that you need to make this batch of beer on their website, and secondly, Clawhead hammer supply who make the system I'll be brewing this beer on today. I'll be using their 10 gallon 240 volt system. So for the grist, the first thing you'll notice is actually it's a standard strength beer's worth of grist in this. It's about eight pounds of grain. A cold mash method actually requires a lot more grain to get the same effect than a hot mash method. So we're going to start out with three and a half pounds of Golden Promise. Uh, so Golden Promise is a great base malt for any style of uh, darker beer. However, um, I'm hoping that I can get a good amount of good base malt flavor out of this. I will see what this does. I'm not totally sure how it'll work, but um, nonetheless, I wanted to have a good portion of base malt in there. Next, we're going to add in a pound and a half of flaked oats to help boost the body of the beer. One of the characteristic issues with non-alcoholic beer is that the beer is watery, so I'm hoping that adding in a lot of uh, high protein grains is going to help keep that uh, body relatively high. It worked really well for the wit beer. I'm hoping that it works well for this beer. We're gonna add in half a pound of acidulated malt, which is a lot of acidulated malt relative to the size of this grist. Again, the point of that is to keep that beer pH relatively low, and that is how we're gonna achieve that. 
And then we're gonna add in all of our specialty malts and classic stout ingredients, lots of roasted malts going into this. These are all in here at relatively even quantities because this is a non-alcoholic beer and because I'm doing that cold steep method. I don't think that there's going to be any sort of uh, astringency or extra roastiness on this because we're gonna be steeping it at a cold temperature. You might get astringency if you use this quantity of roasted malt uh, in a standard mash temperature. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna start out with half a pound of Brees Bonlander Munich malt. Hopefully to get a nice good bit of breadiness in there, uh, a little more richness to the malt. Then we're gonna add to that a few more specialty malts here. We're gonna do half a pound of Carafa Special 2, uh, half a pound of Cara Munich 1, half a pound of chocolate malt, and half a pound of roasted barley. That should give us a lot of nice dark color as well as a little bit of complexity in the roasted malts and then a little bit of sweetness from the Cara Munich. So if this all works out the way that I want it to, we should have a original gravity of about 1016. Keep in mind because of the cold steep method, we are gonna adjust the brew house efficiency of our recipe down to about 30%. You normally want this to be around 25 to 30% if you're going to be using uh, some kind of brewing software to calculate your recipes. So for hops in this one, uh, we're just going to do half an ounce of Magnum at 30 minutes, which is actually the beginning of our boil. We're doing a short 30 minute boil in this because we don't want that original gravity to get too high. We also don't want the bitterness level to get too high either. So this is only about 21 IBUs, which for any other stout is going to be kind of low, but for this one might be kind of high. Because non-alcoholic beer has such a low level of sugar in it, it is extraordinarily easy to over bitter these beers, even with small hop additions. 21 IBUs is really a significant amount of bitterness in this and I'm hoping it's not too much so we'll have to keep an eye on that and I might dial it back when I brew this beer so we'll see for the water on this one I'm using a relatively high minerality profile here something that's going to get us a good balance as well so a relatively balanced chloride to sulfate ratio I find that a high level of minerality in stouts really does help them out quite a bit so the water profile is going to be 129 parts per million of calcium 10 parts per million of magnesium 62 parts per million of sodium, 163 parts per million of chloride, 132 parts per million of sulfate, and 157 parts per million of bicarbonate. And in order to get that water profile, uh, I will be starting out with eight gallons of reverse osmosis water and adding to that six grams of baking soda, 10 grams of calcium chloride, three grams of Epsom salts, and five grams of gypsum salts. All of that will be going into the mash water prior to the non-enzymatic mash actually starting, so hopefully that actually works out pretty well. For the yeast in this beer, plain and simple, just going to be using US05. Um, there's no real need to get creative with the yeast on this one. You can use a dedicated low or non-alcoholic type of yeast strain, um, but you don't need to. So uh, I'll explain more about this in the fermentation section, but US05, one packet of that is going to be all of our yeast. Um, technically, if you look at the gravity of the beer, yes, that's an over pitch. However, if you look at the pH of the beer, that's actually not an over pitch. The pH of the beer is going to be so low that it's going to hinder the actual growth of the yeast. If you actually use a relatively normal pitch rate for the gravity of the beer that we're looking at here, um, you'd actually end up with a bad fermentation because of that pH. That low pH hinders the growth of the yeast so much that we need that whole packet in order to have a successful fermentation. And then lastly, for the mash in this one, as I mentioned, it's a non-enzymatic cold mash. We'll be conducting this for about eight hours overnight, really, uh, at about 35 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that primary portion of the mash is completed, I'll pull the grains out, and then I will also rack the wort off of the layer of sediments, uh, and then we'll have fresh wort for boiling. So I'm actually really interested to see how this one goes. I wanna know if this method is actually gonna produce a tastier non-alcoholic beer than the hot mash did, uh, at least within my relatively small sample size. So we'll see what happens. I started out by adding six gallons of water to one of my anvil bucket fermenters that I'd lined up with a brew bag. I still collected two more gallons of RO water in a separate container, to add back in later, but the anvil bucket fermenter is limited in capacity, so six gallons of water is all I could fit in there. Once all the water had been collected, I added in my water salts and I mixed those up thoroughly. I also milled out all of my grain and mashed in with the entire grain bill. Once everything had been thoroughly stirred up, I put the lid on the anvil bucket fermenter and I stuck it in my fermentation freezer to sit at 35 degrees overnight for the cold mash. I 
came back the next day, about 12 hours later, I took the fermenter slash mash tun out of the fermentation fridge and pulled out the bag, letting that drain for a while. Once the bag had drained fully, I started running wort from the uh, anvil bucket into the claw hammer kettle using the dip tube at the bottom to be very careful to avoid the sludge uh, that had piled up on the bottom of the fermenter. Once all that wort had drained into the kettle, I could see the big thick layer of starchy sludge on the bottom of the anvil bucket, so it was good to know that I didn't pick up any of that. Once the wort had been transferred into the claw hammer kettle, I added the remaining two gallons of reverse osmosis water and started to heat the whole thing up to a boil. Once I reached the boil, I added in my bittering addition, which was half an ounce of magnum at 30 minutes. Once that short 30 minute boil was complete, I chilled through my counterflow chiller and transferred into a fresh clean anvil bucket fermenter and took an OG measurement, finding it to be actually one point short of my intended OG at 10.15. Then I pitched my yeast and I left it to ferment. So for the fermentation of this beer, it's actually relatively simple, all things considered. Um, you can use a non-alcoholic or low-alcohol beer dedicated yeast, such as the Saccharomyces uh, Ludwigi strain, which is WLP618. As far as I know, that's really the only one that's available for homebrewers to use at homebrew scale. Uh, Fermentus does sell Fermentus LA01, and Lalaman sells uh, Lona, but both of those I've only seen in commercial-sized pitches, so just keep that in mind. If you can find the homebrew size, then great, but I don't think they exist. Otherwise, though, you can just use a standard ale yeast and you'll be fine. As I mentioned, just keep in mind your pitch rate is relative to your pH. And uh, if you're using a standard ale yeast or lager yeast, depending on what kind of beer you want to make with this, you're gonna probably wanna use a technique called arrested fermentation. Uh, because of the very, very low amount of sugar in this beer, the fermentation can take place very, very quickly, but it can also keep going well past your intended final gravity target. So you can actually end up with a beer that's closer to like 1% ABV, which is fine if that's what you're going for, um, versus your half a percent ABV. However, uh, you can also end up with a very overly dry and over attenuated beer if you let it keep going as well. So what I recommend doing if you are going to be using a standard yeast strain um, is to just check your fermentation every single day. Check the gravity and then do the calculation to find out what your alcohol level is. And once you hit half a percent alcohol, which is your target for a non-alcoholic beer, then go ahead and cancel that fermentation. Just cold crash that thing, package it. At that point, you will stop your fermentation and you're not gonna have any further issues with uh, over attenuation. So this is known as arrested fermentation and it's a very, very common technique to ensure that you're getting your half a percent ABV. You might have some issues in some off flavors early on because of that arrested fermentation. The yeast will not have had as much time as it would honestly prefer to clean up some of the off flavors that result from regular fermentations. When I made the wit beer, I had issues with sulfur because of the arrested fermentation. Uh, so what I did was I carbonated the beer and then let that sulfur off gas naturally. Very, very easy to get rid of that stuff. Uh, and that's honestly the most likely thing you're going to encounter. So just to recap, what I'll be doing is just pitching one packet of USO5 and letting it ferment at about 65 to 68 degrees for probably about a week. Uh, and then once I see an alcohol level of about half a percent, I will finish that fermentation by cold crashing it, and then transfer into a keg, force carbonate, check the flavor, make sure it's good, let any sulfur get it to uh, work its way out of the beer, and then we'll be ready to serve it. Fermentation for this beer went really fast, as is typical with non-alcoholic beers like this. I checked the gravity daily, and after three and a half days, we dropped from 1012 to 1009 in a single day, and I actually overshot by half a percent ABV, so it ended up being a little bit higher at about 0.8% ABV. Regardless, at that point, I arrested the fermentation, transferred into a keg, and got it cold, crashed, and carbonated up. The beer is called Expect the Unexpected, and it comes in at about 0.7 or 0.8% ABV and about 21 IBUs.
For the appearance of the beer, it is pouring a nice dark brown color with red undertones. And in fact, I'm able to see a little bit of clarity in it, which is nice. Unlike some stouts, it's not super dark and murky or thick, um, but it is still looking pretty nice and stout-like. For the appearance of the head, I'm actually really impressed with this one. It comes out with a nice tan color, and unlike a lot of non-alcoholic beers, it actually sticks around for a long time and uh, has some great lacing, which I'm pretty impressed with. So I'm going to credit the flaked oats with that uh, particular contribution to the beer's appearance. All right, so now it's time to go in for aroma. So the aroma, I'm getting a lot of like, um, almost like a Munich malt character. Yeah, it's like deep, rich breadiness. Uh, a little bit of nuttiness too. Um, smells English, actually. Doesn't really smell like a stout, um, but it's not a bad smell at all. Doesn't smell acrid, doesn't smell um, funky or anything else like that. So let's go in for mouthfeel. Mouthfeel in this one, it's it's a bit light. <laughs> um, it's definitely, you know, obviously it's a non-alcoholic beer, so we're gonna give that some grace. It has smoothness to it. Um, I think the carbonation on this is a bit higher than it probably should be. Um, so it's definitely got like spritziness, like zippiness. Um, but actually, it's not bad. Uh, in terms of the, the mouthfeel, it, it, it's not as thin, I think, as many commercial non-alcoholic offerings can be, but there's no like creaminess or fullness that you might expect from a stout. So it doesn't have that. But then again, like I said, this is a non-alcoholic beer, so we're gonna try and give it a little graze. But overall, actually it's not bad. It's pleasant, it's very drinkable. Um, it's not watery. It's light bodied, but not watery, <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, but now let's go in for flavor. And I'm impressed by this one. I really am. This is, and if I do, you know, maybe run the risk of being a little prideful here, this is better than a lot of commercial non-alcoholic beers that I've had. Um, it is not a stout though, in the way that it comes across. This tastes much more like a gentle porter. Um, so what I'm getting here is a really smooth flavor and a really refreshing one. Um, it's got the grain flavor, it's got none of the worty kind of like half fermented kind of flavor. This is really tasting like a fully fermented beer and I'm actually really happy with it. So there is a little bit of acidic note in this um, and it's just at the very beginning. After that, it actually fades completely and you're left with a really pleasant character in this beer. But that acidic note is important because that's why this beer has stayed fresh for two months. That low pH is really important to keep the beer from spoiling. There's a lot of stuff that can live in non-alcoholic beer that can't live in alcoholic beer that presents food safety concerns. So I'm really pleased to see that this actually worked out um, and that the safety aspect of this is there. It's got a good bitterness to it. Um, and it's got a very pleasant roasted character in that it's very soft and smooth almost like the way that Guinness is. It's very, you have a high presence of roasted malt in it, but it's not harsh, acrid, or anything like that. It's just like almost chocolatey. Um, and this actually has a very strong nutty flavor, uh, similar to like an English beer would have. It's got a hazelnut-like character to it, and I'm really enjoying that. Overall, though, I'm really liking this beer. It is 10 times better than the non-alcoholic wit beer that I brewed uh, back in dry January. Even though it's not dry January anymore, this beer still has a very specific uh, place in my house on my kegerator because at the end of the night, if I've had a few beers and I wanna have one more perhaps, but I know it's like a weeknight and that's probably not a great idea, this is where this comes in. See, because this tastes very much like a regular beer and it's still a delicious thing to drink in general, it really hits the spot. Now, I enjoy this beer quite a bit, but I got a special guest taster for you. Hey, Brian, what do you think of this one? Okay, Steve. I've got your non-alcoholic stout here. I'm super excited to try it. I did wear a t-shirt, one of your shirts, but it's a little chilly today. Uh, I've, I've had this for a while. Steve sent me some beers. One of them was this non-alcoholic stout. 
and I'm gonna give it a try. Still has carbonation. That's good. Let's go right there. Has a nice carbonation, nice little head, little off-white, off-white head. Smells like a stout. I smell the roasted grains. There's something else in there that I smell too. It's, it definitely smells sweet. I'm, I'm guessing because it's a non-alcoholic stout that it's going to have a little bit of residual sweetness in there. And I smell it. Oh yeah, that's nice. You know, a little bit of bitterness. Definitely taste the roasted grains. This is much better than any non-alcoholic beer that I've ever made. In fact, I've only tried to make non-alcoholic beer once and it freaked me out. The fermentation was like, it was from an alien planet. Did not like it. Yeah, Steve, nice roasty flavors. It, it obviously, because it's a non-alcoholic beer, it ha it's a little thin, you know, maybe lacking in some of the body. But if you're going for a non-alcoholic beer and you want a little bit of flavor, like this definitely has way more flavor than any of the non-alcoholic beers I've ever had. I don't get any off flavors. Decent carbonation. It is light on the mouthfeel. It has that stout roasted grains flavor. Nice job, Steve. Nice job. Maybe one of these days I'll be able to figure out a non-alcoholic beer. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and I'm going to make the most alcoholic beer that I possibly can and I'm gonna send that to you. Making good non-alcoholic beer is very difficult. So if you find a non-alcoholic beer that tastes really good, just know that whoever made it, they spent a lot of time perfecting their recipe. This, this is not something that you can just go into and like wing it on your first ta time, like I did, and make a good beer. So the fact that you were able to get this in a can and ship it over to me and have it still taste like beer is a testament to your brewing capabilities. Yeah, so thank you, Steve, for sending this to me. Cheers, Steve, thank you for sending this to me. I could see myself drinking a few of these, and then it's nice because I'm, I'm filming this at like almost 8.30 at night. I normally don't drink beer that late at night uh, because I don't want to deal with, you know, the sleep issues and stuff like that. But I'm an old man, I guess now. So anyway, cheers, Steve. Thank you for sending this to me. Thank you so much, Brian, for tasting the beer. And I'm really glad you enjoyed it. I also was definitely a little bit concerned about the condition of the beer when it shipped across the country, uh, but glad to hear that it actually worked out pretty well. Brian, it's been a great time working with you and I will absolutely take you up on that offer to brew the biggest beer that you can and send that across the country. That sounds like a good time. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to working with you for that one. Guys, be sure to go subscribe to Elementary Brewing Company. He makes some fantastic content that, honestly, if you like my content, you're gonna love his. So be sure you're going over there and checking him out as well. When it comes down to it, I've only got a few potential improvements here. The only thing I would really change about this is if I'm gonna call it a stout, it's gotta have more roasted character and it's gotta have a little bit more body. So I'd throw in maybe some malted oats into the grain bill and maybe a little bit more intense of that roasted character, perhaps some more roasted barley or even some black malt perhaps might do the trick to get that edge that I'm looking for. But otherwise, I'm really happy with this one and this is absolutely a non-alcoholic beer you should brew. Anyway guys, I hope you learned something and you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe as well if you haven't already. If you wanna support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt. You can find this design and many, many others on my merchandise store, which is linked down in the description box. I also have a Patreon, which is responsible for the huge amount of production upgrades that have been going on over the last couple of years. So I really have a great big thank you to give to my patrons. I also have channel memberships and there's the super thanks button if you wanna check out either of those options as well. I have an Amazon store, which is linked in the description box where you can find all of my channel production equipment, as well as a lot of the homebrewing equipment that's available on Amazon that I use on the regular. I'm also active on social media as the apartment brewer. So check out Instagram and Facebook for some more frequent content updates between YouTube videos. 
And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this one, even though it's not dry January anymore. NA beers are still in style, I think, all times of the year. And this is certainly one of my favorites that I've ever had. And I hope you guys brew it as well. And if you do, let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.